far. And if you're watching this, it's probably because you received or you sent the forest, which is part of our plant projects. It's part of our quarantine collection. So you probably received something that looks like this. And inside you'll find a stick. It's actually curly willow, but you're like, wow, thank you for sending me a stick. You will have a really cute little moisture loving plant. This is a prayer plant. It's a calathea. It's kind of fun. You will get a pair of gloves, gardening gloves. These can be dual purpose. You can wear them out, right? Stylish. You'll get a bag of twine. You will get a bag of moss. And you will get a bag of garden soil. It's um, actually, it's a mix of garden soil and peat moss. And that's for kokidama, which is what we're going to make. You need it to be like really moisture loving soil. So if you need to get these things from like a home improvement store or a nursery, you're not in Scottsdale, you're not in Arizona, you can't get it from us. You can absolutely find these things. You just need to get some sheet moss, uh, preserved sheet moss and some indoor potting soil and peat moss. And you need to do equal parts peat moss and garden soil to do the kokidama ball. Kokidama essentially translates to moss ball and they're just kind of a cool little way to hang a plant in your home without a container, without like a macrame or a vessel. It's just another fun way to have plants in your house. They are also really fun and messy to make. So make sure you clear the area. So to start, we're going to get out our soil mixture, which is again, like I said, it's equal parts of garden soil and peat moss and our sheet moss, lots of moss and twine. What you'll need from home that's not included in the package is just a cup of water, just a little bit of water, and any type of scissors. So at that point, we are going to make a kokidama moss ball. And I'm going to have the studio assistant, Adelie, come in and help with this because she is master of this. So gloves and we start. Yes. Hi, Adelie. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so this is probably gonna be like um, really messy. So just, you've been warned. Uh, so basically what you wanna start with is your sheet moss and you're gonna just kind of create like a little pad for it. And so you wanna put the pretty side yeah. of the moss down. So the green side goes down away from you and the brown side that's not so pretty is what's going to be up and what you'll see. The reason for that is that's gonna be on the inside and the pretty moss is going to be on the outside. So it's kind of backwards. Yeah. Okay. So we have this laid down and then we kind of have like a, uh, enough that you're going to be able to wrap the size of your plant so you can kind of gauge with your pot. Um, so then we're going to remove our little plant from his home. You Don't can, be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of like shake the plastic kind of, container and like loosen the roots. Right? Yeah. Just kind of massage him out of his little home. So once we have him out, it's okay if he loses soil because actually we're getting rid of all of the soil that he came with. So all of this, you just kind of want to- Unacceptable shake. soil. Yeah, just horrible, no. <laughs> it's not good for the kokidama though. That's yeah, right, exactly. It's just potting soil. Yeah, so yeah. it needs to retain more soil or more water. So we just kind of get as much as we can. It's okay if you break some of the roots, just don't go like crazy with it. So that's pretty good. And then we're just going to get rid of all of this. So you're just like loosening all the dirt off of the root ball and not totally destroying the root system. Yeah, yeah. But you want to get as much as you can off. You could even run it under some water if you if it's really tight. But this one came out pretty easily. So then you're going to take your new soil and just kind of create a mound. And this is going to be like the super messy part. So like don't do it on nice furniture because it's going to make a mess. So not your super expensive dining room table? Yeah. Probably a bad idea. Maybe outside. Yeah, outside would be a good place. Um, so then you're gonna take your cup of water, just kind of create like a little mountain and just start getting this soil wet. It's a volcano, it's yeah. a project. And then you're literally just gonna mix it up like mud pies when you're a kid, like kind of. See, maybe this is an outdoor project. Do this one Yeah, outdoors. this one, <laughs> yeah. So you kind of want it to be able to form a ball on its own. So like this still doesn't have quite enough water because it's still falling apart. So doughy. Yeah. So you want it to basically be moldable. So just keep adding in water. 
here. So it's probably better to go less than more because you can always add more water. You exactly. can't take water away. So if you keep Yeah, adding... you, you don't want it to be like sludge. You just want it to be able to like form a bowl. Okay, so this is a pretty good consistency. Everything kind of forms together. Uh, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be like so moldable that it's like completely mud gross but just enough that if you pick it up, it's gonna hold some kind of ball shape. Okay. So once we have that, kind of take it, create as much as a ball as you can with your hands, and then you're literally gonna break it in half. So we divided them in half, but they're not perfectly like equal halves. Yeah, it okay. doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, like the Japanese like have like a saying wabi-sabi, which is like embracing imperfection. And that's like, really my life that is literally this <laughs> yeah. so then you're gonna it's take your plant and you kind of now you can kind of decide if like our little plant kind of breaks into two so you could do like one on each side but i'm probably going to keep these guys together and you literally just want to sandwich them in between your little ball you just created so literally sandwich. So you're making a plant sandwich yeah exactly okay and you just kind of form your little ball around your little plant so what we did was we took all of the potting soil off of the root and then we're basically creating a new system of soil around the existing roots yeah, of the right. plant. That okay. can retain a lot more water than the previous soil. Okay. So then we already have our little sheet moss here, a little bed. Bed. Yeah. Bed of sheet moss. So then we're gonna take our plant, pick them up, try to keep as much soil as you can, and you're just gonna pop them right in the center of your little pillow. Once again, like your ball does not have to be perfect and it's gonna be a little messy. That's okay, you can always fix it at the end. So then you're just going to take your moss and kind of create a little wrap around your ball. And you can always, if you think it's too much moss later and it's too like fuzzy, you can always give it a haircut and clean it up if it's a little bit too wild or imperfect imperfect for you yeah you're literally just shaping it because that dirt inside is really moldable so you can kind of create what shape you want if you want it perfectly round an oval yeah I don't know. so when you have go. something yeah that looks like this okay now what so now we take our twine this guy now what do we do we're gonna take our twine and basically what you're going to do is you're just going to start wrapping. There's no real like rhyme. Wabi sabi. Yeah. No rhyme or reason. <laughs> like just start wrapping, get as much moss in there as you can. And you can do this a few times. So like, don't worry about the first time being perfect. So. I feel like having an extra set of hands with this step helps. Yeah, it helps, but it's not necessary. Uh, okay, not it necessary. would just, it would just take longer if you do it on your own, especially if you've never done one before. Uh, it would be a little tricky. So all I'm doing is creating a little knot here to get me started. Again, try to not like tie your plants into your twine. Try to like avoid going on top of the plants. It's probably a good idea. And so the plants that you can use for this, if you go looking for plants at your like local nursery or home improvement store, wherever you want to go, you want to pick things that are moisture loving. So we're using a prayer plant, which is a calate. It's a member of the calathea family. They're really fun because they'll actually kind of, their leaves will move with daylight or the moon or sun rays. Ferns are great. Um, Boston sword ferns, asparagus ferns. Bird nests. Bird nest ferns. ferns are really great. Any ferny type thing is really good. You cannot, he's got a hole. See, and you can be like really rough with it and yeah, kind of shape like, it. Your inside of the moss ball is, is all soil. Uh, so you're not going to hurt it by really going tight with your twine because all you're doing is pushing in that soil. So you're not hurting the plant at all. So don't worry if you're pulling that, tight, that twine tight to keep that shape and to keep all the moss in place. And the twine actually kind of disappears into the moss. So you don't see yeah. a lot of it. So then but, you're just going to kind of tie off your end okay. and you have more twine, so we're gonna go back, but this is just to kind of get your form started. So moisture loving plants, you definitely can't put like, don't put a cactus in this guy. Don't put a succulent in this guy. Um, don't like, don't do any desert plants yeah. in a kokidama. It will not go well for anyone. The plant won't be happy and you won't be happy.
wrapping. Wrapping and wrapping. Oh, it's good. The tighter it is, the better because actually to water these things, you're gonna soak them. So you don't want them to just like totally disintegrate when you put them in the water. So the tighter and more twine you can get on there, the better. Also, you don't want there to be any like big holes because then the soil will just come out when you soak yep, it in exactly. water. So if you're missing or if you're seeing soil through your kokidama, then just make sure you add some more moss and keep wrapping. It's also a good way to hide all of your ties that you started with just at the end to kind of take a, a little bit of moss and kind of cover all that up. So then included in the package as well is a piece of curly willow. This is just a super malleable, um, branch that we get. And you can use this to just kind of wrap it around the outside of your kokidama for a little bit of interest instead of twine. You can cut this, um, you obviously, the thicker the curly willow is, the less moldable it will be. You can see it just like bends. So you don't want this like triangle shape, but the ends you can see are pretty bendy and curvy. So you can then take this as a, just like a kind of artistic or another element or texture to put around your kokidama. And you can attach this to the twine or literally wind it under the twine and then start winding it around. So if you see a little space where yeah, so you this can is, start this guy. Yeah, we're probably going to cut him. See? <laughs> He's a little unmanageable. He's a little too long. Yeah, so this part's basically just weaving. So you just kind of want to take the side where you want him and weave through the twine. The twine, yeah. And then this is kind of where you get to do a little bit of artistic things. I don't really like the ends sticking out, so I try to kind of like shove them back into the ball, just so it looks like it's coming out of the ball. It's good to not see your mechanics. Yeah. So it's good to hide them in the and soil. It's kind of like sewing. You just want to weave it yeah. through. Kokidama ball. So depending on how you want to hang this, you can take the monofilament or you can use more of the twine if you want to. That's like a stylistic thing. If you want to see what it's hanging from, then use the twine. If you don't want to see, then you can use the monofilament. This is essentially like test line or fishing line. It's really similar. Um, so you just want to run this through wherever you want to attach it. So think about this because you can hang these and you can literally hang them upside down. So if you want to have a kokidama hang like this, you just want to make sure you attach it at the top or attach it from wherever you want it. To. Like it can grow out the side. It's not a big deal. So you'll just attach the monofilament wherever you want it to like your suspension point and just do a double knot with the monofilament or the fishing line, the test line, whatever you want to call it. They're kind of the same. And then you have this little hanging kokidama to put somewhere. So kokidama care, Adelie. Yeah, so for kokidama care, um, basically when it gets light, uh, you're gonna wanna rewater it. That's usually every like three to four days. And to water, you're just gonna take, you can either take a bowl to it or take your kokidama down and you're just gonna set it in a bowl for of water and just let it soak for a few minutes and then that's it. It's done, it's watered, it's ready to go. So, so every three to four days. Yeah. And depending on the plant that comes with your kokidama, there will be light instructions. So most of them like kind of indirect light, nothing's really bright light, nothing's like a dark cape, but you'll have a care instruction with the exact plant name and the light that it likes. So with that, happy growing friends. Mm -hmm.